back, two tours to Egypt, just to name a few things that I've done. I was in the infantry the whole time. Um, things like that. That's who I am. But what's most important to me now is being a speaker. And I use a name that most people find weird, which is Mr. P, which stands for Mr. Positive and Every Negative. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel. I believe that there's a positive in every negative. You just have to be willing to look through the crap, ladies, in order to get to the light, to get to the positive, right? It's 2020. How exciting is that? Ooh, Nobody, it, that don't sound exciting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, it's 2020. That's exciting. Now, most of the people around these tables look like they're a lot younger than I am. So when I woke up in 2000, when it was Y2K, <laughs> I went to the market to get water, and of course, what was happening? No water. There was no water, right? Everybody was looking to just go after what they wanted and to take care of themselves, to get everything that they needed so their family wouldn't suffer, right? But now 2020, everybody's looking forward to the next 10 years. Everybody's looking forward to the excitement. And we probably have a lot of things planned. By a show of hands, who here has already planned most of January, probably the first quarter of this year. Who here has plans for a vacation or birthdays or maybe children even graduating school? Elementary, my daughter graduates elementary, my son graduates middle school, my oldest daughter is done with high school several years ago. But we have all these plans ladies, for the upcoming year, all these parties to go to, anniversaries to plan for, gowns and dresses to wear. We plan for all these things in 2020. But I want you to think about this. And I want you to answer this question truthfully. How many of you ladies have actually planned time on your planners, your calendar, your smartphone, your iPhone, or you just wrote a note on a napkin? How many of you ladies have actually planned time for yourself? How many of you ladies have planned time to encourage yourself and to care for yourself? What's great about being an extemporaneous speaker, I pray a lot. I was praying in the corner. I was praying for a guy here. I said, God, I hope they spiritual because here we go. <laughs> so, I'm not going to preach to you, but I'm going to do what he allows me to do, right? We plan for almost everything except the care of ourselves. And why is that? Why is that? Someone tell me, what does self-care look like to you? What does self-care look like to you if you had to think about that? Miss Rebecca. <laughs> so, cleaning your white space, time mm. where you take for yourself to do what you need to do for yourself, be it having that morning cup of coffee where you don't mm. talk to anybody, possibly mm -hmm. getting a massage. Yes, yes, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Manny Petty, you know, something that fills up your cup to where mm. you can do for others and not feel like you're depleting. Absolutely. That is a very great answer, Rebecca. That's almost textbook. Almost everything I researched said that. Actually, according to Google, self-care is taking the responsibility, taking the responsibility for one's own health, well-being, and happiness. Ladies, I get it. Some of you are mothers. Some of you are possibly grandmothers. Some of you are wives. Everyone at the table is a daughter. And most all of you what I know about women, and I don't know a lot, trust me. You can ask my wife. What I know about women, though, women have a tendency to put everyone before themselves. Women have a tendency to put everyone before themselves. I know. In 2011, I watched my wife have a mental breakdown. I take that back. I didn't watch my wife have a mental breakdown. I didn't see the signs of my wife having a mental breakdown. Because I was so busy working, I was so busy running the streets, I was so busy chasing women. Yes, I said chasing women. I was married, chasing women. Why? I had no idea who I was. I didn't care anything about myself. And the one thing I know, if you don't care about yourself, you can't care about others. It's almost impossible. You say it, but how real is it? Because if you're not putting, as Warren Buffett says, you are your greatest investment. And if you're not investing in you, how can you give and invest to everyone else? And today what I want to share with you, what I want to talk about is the importance of self-care and self-encouragement. And as I go back, I say my wife in 2011, mental breakdown, 
Why? Because she cared for me and the business I started. She cared for our son. She cared for our daughter. She cared what her mother said. She cared what everyone said except for her. And she was dying in the inside. And she told me, I need a break. I'm like, you're superwoman. What do you mean you need a break? You do everything. You know why I think you're superwoman? You know why your kids think you're superwoman? Why your husband thinks you're superwoman? Why your mom thinks you're superwoman? You know why? Somebody tell me why they think you're superwoman. Say it again. You do it. You don't stop. But who takes care of superwoman? Even Superman had a woman, Lois Lane, to take care of him. <laughs> I'm just saying. That just came to me. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's spiritual. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies, you are your number one priority. It is almost impossible to truly, continuously care for someone else if you're not caring for yourself. Or as T.D. Jake say, what's the point in building a business? And I've seen a hundred business cards go around this table. What's the point of building a business, having a business take off and do well, I mean do very well, but then you're too tired, you're too stressed, you're too worried to even enjoy what the business is doing. Anybody know, if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, ladies. Anybody know who Kate Spade is? Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain? Yes. Robin Williams? Yeah. They all had something in common besides suicide. They all had money. Millionaires. Some of you sitting at this table could be millionaires, thousandaires, hundredaires, zero nares. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank. It doesn't matter how many friends you have on Instagram. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. If you can't get up, walk into that mirror, and boldly say you love you, you believe in you for the woman you are standing in that mirror with no makeup, caring for someone else won't help you. Self-care is an internal thing. It's not an external thing. It's not external at all. When I think about self-care, actually I was reading something in Forbes. Of all places, I think Forbes, I think millionaires. I think money. But Forbes had an article that said, self-care should consist of five practices. One being knowing your self-worth. Very important to know what your self-worth is. Again, I was a man running around cheating on his wife. Because men do it too. They have no idea what their self-worth is. We lie all the time and say we good. We got it together. We know where we're going. We don't have a clue. Some woman behind us is going crazy because she's giving us everything so we can function and say we got it together. But knowing yourself, a good work relationship balance. How many people here put more hours in at work than they do at home? Two years ago, I was doing a study when I was speaking for a class, and it said that the average person spends up to 10 hours, 10 hours a day on screen time, whether it be your iPhone, your tablet, your laptop, your TV, your desktop computer, if you still have one. 10 hours a day on screen time. But the average family spends two hours a week together. Talk about self-care. So one, you're not caring for yourself, and two, you're really not caring for your family because what are we doing? We're taking the opinions of society. We're taking the opinions of the world. You're taking the opinions of this guy, a young African-American male who dropped out of high school in Detroit, Michigan. I have Detroit, Michigan. I have five kids by three different women. You're taking my opinion. And some of these words, some of you might hold value. Some of these words you guys might throw it, you ladies may throw it out. But why am I here right now? Because someone told me about the importance of self-care and self-encouragement. And through those practices of practicing self-care, now get into those other three things of practicing those self-care habits and help me to transition, to dig deep, to find who I was, what my purpose was in life. What's my, what am I passionate about? What does God have for me? Like, ask yourself that question. What am I here to do? I'm more than a mother. I'm more than a wife. Not that I'm a mother or a wife, but more than a mother and a wife. More than a girlfriend. You're Reagan. You're Susan. You're Megan. You're Tim Kedia. You're, you are a masterpiece. 
You know why you're a masterpiece? Because God created you to be his masterpiece. I can't tell you what that looks like for you. You have to tell you. Self-care. Self-care. Responsibility of your own self-happiness. Your own personal growth. So as I was stating earlier, Forbes had five things. Knowing yourself, a good work relationship, life balance. The third thing, distress management. And if you don't know yourself and you don't have a good work-life balance, you probably don't know how to manage stress. You probably don't. The fourth thing is to stop just live, stop just existing and start living. Stop just existing. What do I mean by that? I mean, I've been told or been programmed to believe that you wake up, you go to school, you get a high school diploma, you go to college, you get a good education, you get married, you have 2.5 kids, a house, a white picket fence, maybe a dog and a cat, a couple nice cars, you work, you die, hopefully you go to heaven. And don't forget you get some vacations in between there. Anybody ever heard that story before? Has anyone ever, any lady ever heard the importance of taking care of yourself first? You may have heard of, put your husband first. Put your kids first. Listen to what your mother tells you. But at the end of the day, after you put your husband first and possibly put your kids and your mother first, if you just so happen to be that unlucky person to be sick or be in a hospital, then you find out what self-care really is. Because all those people, although they love you dearly, they will not be spending the next 24 hours in the hospital with you for the next 20 to 30 days. See, self-care is not only knowing yourself, good work-life balance, uh, better health is one, and managing stress. Better health. Let's talk about that. I don't remember your name, ma'am, and excuse me, but I heard you. I, I heard you stating earlier that you owned a CrossFit gym. Uh, not a gym, CrossFit gym. But uh, Jim, you're into working out, and someone else mentioned about working out being healthy, and this is what's great about God and how he does things. I've heard several women today say something either self-encouragement or self-care, which we were talking about today. Self-encouragement or self-care. Self-care consists of five things according to four. We're going to focus on two, knowing your self-worth and better health. Now, I don't know what better health looks like for you. I really don't, but you do. You all have examples of what better health is, whether it be running, biking, swimming, Yoga, horseback riding, the list goes on. Going to the gym, I'm all about better health. I woke up this morning at 4.30 in the morning. At 5.30 in the morning, I was out on Cypress Creek Road with a 40-pound rucksack on. Rucksack is just the name for a huge army book bag. That's what it is. We pack a lot of equipment in and we march everywhere we go. Since I did 15 years in the military, it's been embedded in my brain. And so for my self-care, I've done everything from go to the gym and work out. I've went running. I've went biking. I've went hiking. I've done all those things. But the most peace and the best results I found was going back to the Army and building my body just by walking with this 40-pound pack on. But the thing about that 40-pound pack and building my body by doing push-ups, building my self-care physically, the most important part of my self-care actually goes hand-in-hand -hand with the physical, which is the mental. The mental self-care, it's definitely more important than the physical self-care. Would you agree? And if you don't agree, think about it like this. There's 32 NFL teams, 32 NBA teams. You have a host of high school football teams and cross-country teams and softball and baseball. And some of these children and some of these men or women look like Greek goddess, look like an Adonis. Their bodies are sculpted and shaped and fit. I mean, their self-care when it comes to their physical health is amazing. But their mental state. How often do we hear about NFL players battering women? How often do you hear about NBA players jumping on girlfriends? How often do you hear about someone having a weapon or drug possession? Now tell me, ladies, I'm not judging anyone. But if you're abusing someone else like that, could you really be caring for yourself? Could you really be caring for yourself? So it doesn't matter how physically fit you are, if you're not mentally strong, if you're not tackling that part of the self-care model, then you won't go any further. You can network with the divas every day, but if you go home and you continue to speak that same stinking thinking, 
about what you was or what they said you should do or where you should go, ladies, you won't go any further. You won't go any further. Oh, look like my computer went off, but it's that. Uh, they locked the door on you, sorry. You won't go any further than that, ladies. Oh, past that. Told you I don't need this thing. I just brought it for gifts. Sorry, <laughs> ladies, I really apologize because I don't need this thing. Uh, yep, oh, pass all that. I'm just moving right along. <laughs> Yesterday I was reading in your bylaws, and if I'm not mistaken, in the mission statement, I think one of the first things I seen, which was very powerful, was the mission of the networking divas. One of the primary missions and goals was to encourage other women to connect, build businesses, and strengthen each other, right? Something of that nature, right? And again, and encouraging other women. I admire that. That's average. But if you don't encourage other women, if you don't encourage yourself as much as you encourage those other women, how can you truly be a benefit to those women? How can you truly be a benefit? That's almost like your parents telling you not to drink and then they crack the bottle open in front of you. That's almost like telling you, you can do anything you put your mind to and then they go to do something totally opposite. See, self-care starts with our self. It's always the internal, never the external. It's not what they say about you. It's not what I say to you today. It's what you say about you. It's what you say you can do. There are no limits in this world. Do you understand that? That phone in somebody's hand, Steve Jobs, that iPhone, he thought enough of himself that this could be a reality, that people would stand in line for this. What gift do you have inside of you? What do you possess? What has been planted inside of you? to be birthed, to be given back to the world. Self-care is not just about ourselves. When you care for yourself enough, when you love yourself enough, when you encourage yourself enough, then everyone around you begins to grow. Everyone around you begins to grow. But if you don't care about yourself, if you don't put yourself first, if you don't move forward in life with what you say you want, how do you expect to get any better? So after you move on from self-care by physically being fit, swimming, biking, hiking, after you do the mental, the mental reflex, the prayer, the meditation, all those things work. Trust me, I know. Two years ago, I started doing them. Two years ago, I was back in Michigan, except divorced from my wife, my high school sweetheart. Divorced from my wife, 40 years old, living in my sister's basement. Why? Because I still didn't care about myself. I care about what everybody told me I was from elementary school all the way until I was almost 40 years old. I cared about my parents divorcing when I was seven years old. I cared what people had thought about me having five kids by three different women. I cared what people thought about me quitting the military the first time that I went into. I cared about all those things. But once I shifted my self-care, once I gave myself to God, once I started listening to him, he told me, start encouraging yourself. So I put this post on my on my uh, vision board, I like to call it. It says, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. One more. <laughs> I know what that's like. It's all right. I have this, I have this post on my vision board. It says, you've been criticizing yourself for years. Keep approving of yourself and see what happens. Well, ladies, two years ago I started approving of myself. Look what happened. Look what, look what God did with the gentleman with five kids by three different women. What I didn't tell you is all five of my children, we have a tremendous relationship who I talk to on a regular basis. My oldest daughter is a college graduate. My second daughter, our oldest daughter, she works downtown here in Austin, but she started a photography business. My other children are doing well in school. I'm back with my wife. I dropped out of high school. I went back and got a high school diploma and an associate's degree. I love speaking and giving energy. Mm -hmm. I realize, Lord, you've been having me speak to people all my life. I just was talking crap. <laughs> I just was, I was just giving my opinion whether they wanted it or not. You step in this bubble, it's go time. <laughs> That's how I felt. But when I start encouraging myself by putting those positive affirmations up, when I start praying more, when I start adding that in with my workout routine, because self-encouragement is not just about reading the affirmation. Self-encouragement it's about surrounding yourself with people, Diva Networking Group. Surrounding yourself with people, church members, 
And maybe sometimes church members are not the best. Trust me, I know. I went to church a lot. And they give a lot of rules that God may not give us all the time. Church members, just friends, surrounding yourself with positive people who believe in you and who support you, not finding fault in your dreams and aspirations in which you believe. But the most important part of self-encouragement on the second part of that definition, that part was you believing in you. And excuse me, I'm paraphrasing. But it's you believing in you. If you don't believe in you, if you don't believe in what you stand for, if you don't believe in what, who you are and what you do, there's nothing I can say that will possibly help you. It may change something. It may inspire you. But how long will it lead you and guide you? Again, that's from the internal, not the external. Oprah Winfrey put it this way. All right, now this one I have to look at. The number one thing you're here for, this is Oprah Winfrey. We know who Oprah is. The number one thing that we, you are here for, she was talking to a group of women, is to fill your cup. Fill your cup. Fill your cup. Always pour in the positive energy. Always tell yourself you are enough. Always tell yourself you are valuable. Always tell yourself you are loved. Always tell yourself, I'm God's masterpiece. He created me to look. Just like this. Five, seven and a half, very dark skin, decently muscular body. My brain can be built to whatever I want it to build it to. If I pour into me. Oprah Winfrey says, always fill your cup. That is your number one priority. So then you can go and fill other people's cup. But if your cup is empty, how do you help me? If your cup is empty, how do you help me? What does self-encouragement look like to you ladies? I know everybody, I'm eating now, right now. You don't got time. You got time? Just tell us what you want us to know. <laughs> Self-encouragement self for you ladies. Again, surround yourself with the right people in your group. Believe in yourself. Push yourself. Push yourself harder than you've ever pushed yourself before. I push myself to be back here with my family. I push myself not to be a dropout. I push myself not to be a deadbeat dad. I push myself to go get an associate's degree because I felt like I was smart enough to get it. And since I pushed myself to do that, now I'm doing this. See, today I'm speaking to the networking divas. Today I'm speaking to 20 or 30 people. But two years ago, there was a time when I spoke to one or two people, when I didn't know if I could still do this. Two years from now, as we move further into this decade, as me and my wife and my family begin to evolve and continue to grow and continue to move forward, one day I'll be giving a message to thousands of people on the importance of self-care and self-encouragement. And ladies, I hope if I don't leave anything else with you today, if I don't leave anything with you, you understand this. You are your greatest investment. And until you start to invest more time in you than you invest in everyone else, you will suffer. You will. Because your cup will be empty. And I have to see this one. Sorry, ladies. Yep, I'm right on track. <laughs> What does that look like, though, now, for me? After two years of living in my sister basement, being back in Austin, Texas, now I'm three years, remarried to my lovely wife. That's what it looks like. But also, what does that look like? I don't have a job. I will be 100%. I don't want one. I don't want a job where I have to go punch the clock and somebody can tell me how to move, when to move, or what to do. That's not caring for myself. I care for myself enough. For one, yes, no, I need to make money to provide for my family. How do I do that? I go do Uber, I go do Lyft. Why does Ethan do Uber and Lyft when he wants to be a speaker? I'm on the front lines, it's infantry. I'm speaking to people every day. I'm inspiring, I'm encouraging, I'm motivating, I'm uplifting, and guess what, ladies? I'm getting to travel Austin, Texas, and they surround us for free. All I have to do is put gas in the car. Nobody tells me to take a 10 minute break. And my daughter at school asked me to bring lunch, I bring lunch. What that looks like to me, excitement. I volunteer at my daughter's school four days a week. It's a joy to walk in that school and say, hey, Mr. Smith, how are you? I watched your video on YouTube. Can I have a t-shirt? I love it. I'm like, huh? Kids are asking for t-shirts? Because I have a t-shirt that says, Mr. Peen, show up to blow up. <laughs> Simple. Show up to blow up. If you continue to show up for yourself every day, I'm standing here. I showed up every day. 
I read my goals and my affirmations. I can, I can give you my schedule right now from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. I showed up every day and I read the same thing for nine months straight. Now I'm here. Showing up for yourself and encouraging yourself, what it looks like to me is walking in Reed Elementary and seeing the smiles on those kids' faces, excited to work with me. And I'm not the best student. I'm not the best student at all. Some of this fourth grade math is hard. I know somebody's a math tutor. Some of this fourth grade math is hard for Ethan. What do I do, though? I'm honest with the kids. I don't lie to them. I will do the best I can, Mr. Smith, to help you. And if I don't know, I'll go ask the teacher. Because Ethan understands in order for me to move forward, I have to encourage myself and be honest with myself and share those things with people that may seem uncomfortable, may seem scary. Why? Why? Why are you afraid to be you? Why are you afraid to love you? Why are you afraid to push you out there? Why? Why do we do that, ladies? Please, somebody tell me. Why do we do that? No? Okay. Here's another thing. So just being me doing Uber and um, inspiring people looks like this now. And I have to get closer and read this one. It says, Ethan, you're my Uber driver doing ACL Fest. Doing ACL Fest, and you gave me some pretty strong positive information. I'm going through a really hard time right now. I cannot, <clears throat> I'm going through a really hard time right now mentally. It's getting hard to keep going. Ooh, I'm so sorry, ladies. It's getting hard to keep going, but I wanted to say thank you for the powerful words and the messages that you gave me. I think about them every day. Now, this is a young lady that lives in Ohio's in medical school. I have an associate's degree. She's in medical school listening to the Uber driver's information. I don't care how much money you have. If you don't have you, if you don't know who you are, you cannot pour into someone else. See, being divas, as I was looking up the definition of divas, it says it's an opera singer or a pop icon or the third one. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I want to bring that in there. I might get punched. Because when I think of Diva, I think Whitney Houston, I think Aretha Franklin, I think the old soul. I'm 42. I don't keep up with the new stuff. Maybe Beyonce. <laughs> but when I looked at Diva, it said a Diva is someone who is self-important, extremely difficult to work with, hard to please, sometimes very temperamental. I'm like, oh, wow. And then in parentheses, ladies, it said usually a woman. <laughs> Uh, nobody told me because I've been divish my whole life. I always thought I was a stuff. Only in the negative aspect, though. I thought I was a stuff that other people said, but I wore it proudly because a diva is bigger than life. So I think when most people look at divas, they look at someone that's bigger than life. Not someone who's intolerable or indifferent, but it's part of that definition that says self important. If you are not important to yourself, can you truly call yourself a diva? I ain't talking about self-important to where you're ridiculing everyone else and you're making them feel less than human beings, less than people. No, I'm talking about self-important to where you care for yourself enough to stand up for yourself and say, no, not today, honey. I don't want to go with you and the boys to the golf court. I'm going out to have some wine with the ladies. No, not today, kids. Can't drop you off at Jimmy's house to play Fortnite all day. <laughs> not today. I'm actually going on a meditation break with the ladies. It's okay to say no. It's one of the hardest things for us to do, and it hurts. Because people say, oh, you're so selfish. And I don't want to go off topic, but think about this for a second. When was the first time you ever heard you were selfish? When you heard you were selfish for the first time, it was probably because you had something... Or you wouldn't do something that someone else wanted or wanted you to do. And you're selfish for eating your chips, eating your salad, not loaning out your car. You're selfish. Really? No, ladies. You're just putting yourself first. Putting yourself first is how you move forward in life. And I'm going to use this scripture. Romans 12 and 2 says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I 
can't renew your mind. She can't renew your mind. You can renew your mind. I'm telling you it's possible because I'm standing here. I'm standing here. I walked out on my wife. I walked out on my children. When I came back two years ago, my son wouldn't talk to me. But you wouldn't know that being in this room. You wouldn't know that when I walked through this door. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't. But what you do know, oh, this guy seems pretty confident, pretty comfortable. Why? Because I took care of myself. I started to uplift myself. I started to work on myself. I started to believe in myself. I started to push myself harder than I ever pushed before. And I stopped listening to what everyone else tell me I was or tell me what I should be. And I'm coming to a close right here. I don't need that one. Oprah Winfrey also left us with this. Don't be afraid of honoring yourself. How many people celebrate themselves? When was the last time you celebrated yourself? I, I, I got to tell y'all something about me. I am a wild and crazy guy. Nothing bothers me. I like to have fun. I believe in living life. I got one shot on this thing called earth. Not one shot at life. Because if I, you believe in the higher power, just go on to the next place, right? I got one shot on God's beautiful earth. Nobody who was created like me when you zip us open and pull us apart, we all look the same. Nobody who was created like me is, is going to have the ability to tell me how to do me. The only person that know how to do me is me. The only person that know how to do you is you. Where do you get your information from? Where do you get your guidance from? You get it from the man above. You get it from the woman above. You get it from Buddha. You get it from Allah. You get it from the universe. Personally, it doesn't matter who you get it from to me. If it's not coming from the internal and it's coming from the external, you probably want to get it back. Some information is good. And no offense to my friend down there. Stop taking so not you. Stop taking so many people's opinions. And I'm 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 not talking. No, not you. Let me let me clear this up. I have a problem with saying something. People be like, oh really? That's how you feel? <laughs> When you say opinions, I'm the same. I like giving my opinion. What I want y'all to understand, stop taking so many opinions. Only go to people with wise counsel. See, the difference between opinions and counsel is counsel have done it. And she's probably nine times out of ten giving you wise counsel. But we call it opinions. But an opinion, they probably never done it before. It's probably like one of y'all started a business here and a friend, family member told you it's not going to work. You can't do that. How dare you? You're a mother. You can't do that. Why? Because they've never done it before. But then you come to a group like the Networking Divas, and they like, all right, let's go, ladies. Let's do this, girl. So that's what I'm saying to you. Let's do this, ladies. Let's start waking up. Let's start going in the mirror and telling yourself, I am love. I am valuable. I am a masterpiece. I am enough just the way I am. Why I am enough? Because I care about myself, and I will encourage myself and be my own cheerleader when no one else is clapping or blowing a horn. Love yourself, ladies. Believe in yourself. Push yourself to be the best version of you. Because if you are not the best version of you right now, then you, and only you, can change that. Through the power of self-care, self-encouragement. Forbes says five practices. I like to just focus on the two. Know your self-worth and take care of your physical health. I don't care if you run one mile, walk a flight of stairs. You know what your physical health limits are. Start to improve your physical health. Start to know your self-worth and watch how your life begin to change. You'll be standing in front of a crowd of people as you do two, twice a month and talking to them about the importance of caring for yourself. Because as a networking diva, because networking is just connecting, being a diva is being somewhat self-important. But as a networking diva, the way to truly be a great networking diva is to network on yourself, connect with you, talk to you, love you, hug you, believe in you, and push you to do the best that you can do. And anybody that don't want you to be you, it's probably not the person for you. They can take it how they want to take it. At the end of the day, I got an answer to God sometimes. <laughs> take it how they want to take it, ladies. And I'll leave you with this last quote from Wayne Dyer. Caring for yourself is not selfish. 
To care for yourself is your sacred responsibility. Oprah Winfrey said, fills your cup. Wayne Dyer says, caring for yourself is not bad. The Lord Jesus Christ even say, renew your own mind. You were created in his image, not her image, not her image, not her image, not my image. You were created in his image, her image, however you want to look at it. You were created in the image of a power, a power much greater than yourself. He who lives in me is greater than he who lives in the world. It's the internal, not the external. Start looking within and watch how more of you starts to come out and bless other people. My name is Ethan Smith. Thank you for your time. I almost gave you salute. Thank you for your time. <laughs> I almost gave you salute. It's a, I don't know. It's one, it, it must be a, uh, not even military. It must be the neighborhood that I'm from when I'm, on my videos, I go, hey, it's Mr. Peen, and at the end, I do this. Yes, ma'am. Since we're divas, we prefer it to Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, divas. <laughs> Any questions? Anybody want to throw tomatoes, anything like that? Can I add one thing? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, you talk about self-care and self-encouragement. Actually, it's somebody I did business with, and we have been doing business with for many, many years. And this was a person who was becoming negative and really becoming questionable mm -hmm. of who I was in my business practices. And I have very, very high integrity. And it took a conversation that my husband had with me and said, why are you doing business with this person? They are really not supporting you. They're really breaking you down. And it, and I, it, it took another person to hear that, to hear that. And so to me, taking someone away and taking someone out of my life was the best thing. And what's really interesting, thank you, is this person today wants into my world so much because of all the wonderful people that I have in my world. So I want to caution everybody to think about who you're doing business with and who you have in your world and get those negative non-supportive, non-productive people out of your world. It is, I promise you personal experience, it is the best thing that you can do. The best thing that you can do. That's all I have to say. Lay, I just have to say, what a fantastic way to start the year. I don't know about y'all, but I feel supercharged and kind of like a super woman. <laughs> hey, long as Superwoman go home and get a little break and tell Clark Kent and Superman to go out there and pick up the kids, do the groceries. Superman knows don't talk to me before 10 o'clock. <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning that. I'm a morning person. So 4.30 in the morning. And you would think, 24 years, even with a break, you would think I was I would stop going in there and say, hey, babe, what you think about this at 8 in the morning when she's wiping the, you know, she's looking at me like, babe, really? Now I get it. My husband says this. I'm learning now. I just look at her face and I say, but you know what? Not <laughs> Good time. So ladies, what I just put in front of you is what I like to call an inspiration card. I don't make business cards. I ask God, how can I put something in someone else's hand and touch them to inspire them? Um, most of them may be different. Some of you ladies may have one the same. If you want more, I have extra. So if you see something that you like from someone, please take more. This is just my way of giving back. It's easy for me to say, hey, please go follow me on social media, on Instagram at Mr. Peen, on YouTube at Mr. Peen 77, on Facebook. It's easy to say that. But it takes a little bit more care and concern to put something in someone's hand for them to go back and look at later. And I think it's some pretty powerful messages on that. So. Again, thank you, Divas, for having me. It's been wonderful. So, Divas, this is just a just an example, a fantastic example of what we what we get every month. We get, um, I can we call it.